Hello everyone, my name is Madalena Banarescu and uh, my PhD topic is approaches to reconstruction of oral maxillofacial defects based on virtual surgical planning. Uh, currently, I'm a PhD student at both Semmelweis University and University of Medicine and Pharmacy from Iași, Romania, and my supervisors are Victor Vladkostan and uh, Gabor Gerber. My vision, my vision is to improve the life quality of patients with oromaxillofacial defects, and my mission is to improve the aesthetics and functional, and functional outcomes. Uh, these are my uh, two ongoing projects. They are uh, both uh, uh, systematic review and meta-analysis. The first one, we are investigating the effectiveness of intraoperative surgical navigation over the conventional surgery in the management of zygomatico maxillary complex fractures. As a bit of a background, just in the year of 2017, we had uh, 7.5 million new cases of facial fractures, and the prevalence of zygomatico maxillary complex fractures is 28.3%. Also, 10, between 10 and 15% of, the, of these patients have a remaining mid-facial deformity after the conventional surgical treatment. So this is why our aim is to assess the accuracy uh, of intraoperative surgical navigation in treating zygomatic maxillary complex fractures. The question is if intraoperative surgical navigation is more effective and we uh, used the PICO format. We investigated patients with zygomatic fractures treated with intraoperative surgical navigation and without the intraoperative surgical navigation. And our primary outcome was the accuracy. We measured the average deviation and the accuracy of different points. And as a secondary outcomes, we had the operative time, mouth opening, the amount of bleeding, hospital stay, and cheek numbness. Our hypothesis was that intraoperative surgical navigation is more effective than conventional surgery. Here you can see the systematic search. We uh, made the search on uh, 3rd of uh, December last year, and we had five uh, uh, full text articles included. Here you can see the first forest plot in which we measured the average deviation. The way we measured, the way the studies measured the average deviation is basically in the first image you can see the uh, preoperative plan that uh, they did. In the second one is the actual uh, postoperative result and they superimposed the images to measure the average deviation. Uh, in this forest plot, we uh, included four studies and we measured the mean differences in millimeters. And as you can see, uh, the intraoperative navigation group had a 1.01 millimeter uh, improvement. Although this result is not statistically significant, uh, if you uh, take into consideration the fact that a uh, discrepancy of more than two millimeters between the right and the left side of the patient or more than two millimeter in asymmetry, uh, it is uh, visible this result is clinically uh, uh, relevant. In the second forest plot, we measure the accuracy of the most prominent point. Why is this important? Because the most prominent point has a, a high impact on the aesthetics of the patient. Uh, in this one, we included three studies and we also measure mean differences and uh, we had an improvement of 0 0.39 millimeters in the navigation group, although this result is not statistically nor clinically significant. Uh, in the third one, we also measure the accuracy of the infraorbital rim between the two groups. The reason why we measure that is because uh, in the majority of the cases, the zygomatic fractures are also associated with orbital wall fra fractures, and they uh, are uh, the symptoms, the ocular symptoms are pretty common uh, even before and even after the surgery. Uh, we also measure mean differences, and we uh, had an improvement of 0 0.66 millimeters uh, for the, in favor of the navigation group, but this result is not statistically nor clinically significant. Uh, as, you, as you could observe in all of the studies, uh, in all of the forest plots regarding the accuracy, there was a high level of heterogeneity, and the reason for that is that uh, the studies they, in the studies they investigated uh, different types of uh, zygomatic fractures uh, between acute and uh, delayed and the severity of them. Uh, the in the next forest plot, we investigated the operative time between the navigation-guided and conventional surgery, and we measure mean differences in minutes. 
As you can see, there was only a difference of 3.03 minutes between the navigation and the conventional group, and we had actually uh, those three extra minutes uh, in the navigation group, not in the conventional, but this result is not statistically nor, nor uh, clinically relevant. Uh, the next figure is uh, we investigated the maximum mouth opening. This is important because in uh, a lot of zygomatic fractures we can have a limitation in, uh, in the mouth opening, so it is, it is also uh, important to measure this as an outcome. However, uh, we, had no, we had no statistical, no clinically uh, relevant difference between them. We had a mean difference of 0 0.69 millimeters. The maximum mouth opening has a pretty wide range. It, it can range from 20 millimeters or even uh, 70 millimeters based on uh, gender uh, of the person or uh, even constitution. Uh, the strength uh, of, our, of our first meta-analysis is, is the first meta-analysis on intraoperative surgical navigation treating zygomatic fractures, and we also investigating mon multiple outcomes. However, we have some limitations, such as the small number of studies, small, num sn small number of patients, and we included multi multiple types of fractures. Our conclusion is that using intraoperative surgical navigation could improve postoperative average deviation, but we have no significant differences in the accuracy of the most prominent and infraorbital point, operative time, or, ma or maximum mouth opening. The implications for practice are important because uh, our results suggest that uh, intraoperative surgical navigation could be more helpful in treating the more severe fractures could be also helpful uh, for teaching young surgeons, and it's also important to take into consideration, uh, to take into consideration the learning curve that, that is necessary. The implication for research is that different type of fractures should be investigated separately. We should also measure the time uh, uh, in which the surgeon are actually using the intraoperative uh, navigation system. We also need to measure the orbital volume and we need the preoperative measurements of, of the maximum mouth opening. Here you can see our manuscript status. We are working now on the supplementary material and we hope uh, by the uh, mid-April uh, we uh, submit the, uh, the manuscript and you can also see uh, our targeted journals. This, in the second project, we would like to investigate the use of virtual surgical planning, this time in mandibular reconstruction over the conventional technique. It's also a systematic review and uh, a meta-analysis. A mandibular reconstruction is a challenging task because of the functional and aesthetic implication, and we have several studies suggesting that virtual surgical planning could help reduce the operative time and increase uh, the accuracy. And this is why we aim to achieve a better functional and aesthetic results in mandibular reconstruction. The question is that if virtual surgical planning is more effective in mandibular reconstruction uh, over the conventional technique, we use the same PICO format. We investigated the mandibular reconstruction with patients treated by using virtual surgical planning or without the virtual surgical planning. And we are also planning to measure the uh, accuracy, the operative time, ischemia time, cost, complication, and hospital stay. Our hypothesis is that virtual surgical planning is more effective in mandibular reconstruction than the conventional technique. As a clinical and uh, research implication, we want to achieve, we hope to achieve better functional and anesthetic results to reduce the operative time and ischemia time, leading to a lower complication rate. Here you can see our preliminary search, and here you can see a summary of our, of our two projects, and as soon as we submit the uh, first manuscript, we will uh, start working on the second project. I will leave you with this. You do not rise to the level of your goals, but you fall to the level of your systems. Thank you for your attention. My question is about your first topic uh, for the zygomatic fractures. Uh, my question is that, uh, is it a novel thing, or how commonly used the navigation surgery uh, system? That is a good, good question, thank you. So first, uh, it's a long time since the navigation system has uh, been used in medicine, but it first started to be used in uh, neurosurgery. And then I think 20 years ago, it started to be used in uh, orbital fractures, 
uh, more precisely because with the help of uh, the navigation we have basically more access to the uh, not so visible regions uh, of the face. And just recently they started investigating if this system could be, actual, uh, could be actually used uh, with uh, benefits to other types of fracture in a maxillofacial field. I see. Thank you very much. So it would have been my question as well. Uh, is it available for everyone? So I'm how sorry? commonly? So is it available for every patient suffering this kind of fractures, or what? What are the limitations? Uh, uh, available in in what way? I'm sorry. So can be operated the patients everywhere, or how commonly used this navigation? So unfortunately, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we do not have very much information about the cost of this system uh, during our uh, research, but it definitely involves an additional cost for the uh, hospital or the clinic that uses this system. So, for example, in Romania, we do have some hospitals that benefit from this kind of uh, uh, navigation system and others don't. So it basically depends on the possibility of uh, each institution if they have the, uh, the funds to... Uh, so it's not a common technique anyway? No, it's not, it's not a common technique. All right. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I will have a short question. I had the opportunity to work uh, with this system and see this in the ENT clinics. And uh, I'm uh, curious about uh, other outcomes. You uh, nicely presented uh, something like the surgery outcomes, how the bones uh, are uh, structured better or not better. But uh, the perioperative blood management, the surgical time, and uh, the overall you know, you're working with a very cool gadget as a surgeon and maybe you're uh, working faster. So it's an overall impression. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't see any pitfalls, just the price. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice and futurist technique, right? Yes, it could be. So, for example, we investigated the operative time and uh, our results suggest that it, it takes more time using the navigation system Sorry. than the conventional surgery, but a small difference, like three minutes. But uh, the disadvantages that we had is that we didn't have any information of the uh, experience of the surgeon using this navigation system. And some studies also suggested that uh, at first, when they started using the navigation system, uh, uh, the uh, intraoperative time, it was longer than the conventional surgery, but after that it was improved because it, also the learning curve, uh, it's important. Regarding, for example, the uh, amount of bleeding, we also investigated this outcome. We couldn't include it because of the uh, time limit, but uh, we only had two studies that measured the uh, amount of bleeding and we had uh, no difference, no, no statistical or no uh, clinically relevant difference between them. However, uh, it also had uh, pretty uh, different results because they also investigated different type of fractures. So for example, one of them investigated a more delayed type of fractures like after two months treated, and another one they investigated fractures that were treated between 10 days, for example. So the amount, the amount of bleeding and also the surgical time required for the uh, treatment of the fracture, it was uh, largely, lar largely different.